Hey, 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 traders. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, uh, it is Sunday morning, and I wanted to make a video because um, I get ask many questions. Um, it's, it's funny, when, when you're a professional trader, it's one of the most awkward careers in the world in a lot of ways, uh, especially when you go to social events or things like that and people say well what do you do and you say you're a trader they kind of look at you with this you know um, with this funny look on their face uh, what's even better is when you say you're a hedge fund manager um, they you know they immediately go oh well we have a very nice garden as well too with some beautiful hedges but <laughs> A lot of people really don't understand what trading is, and you know, unless you get into it, you you really wouldn't know what it was. But once you under once you explain to people that you're, you know, that you're involved in making money from the markets and fluctuations in the market, um, then you usually get asked a series of questions. So I want to do a little video of the five most frequently asked questions that I get over. Uh, that I've gotten over my 30 year, 38 year career as a trader. So without further ado, let's jump into them because I think it's really important if you're thinking about this career, um, you should really know the answers from somebody with my experience, okay? So let's start off, what is number one? Question number one is always, always, how much money can I make or can I make a living from trading? Now, um, the basic answer is how much money can you make? Well, let me answer the first question. Can, can you make a living from trading? The answer is yes. Uh, how much money can you make? Billions. Yeah, you can, you can make a living from trading and you can make billions. Now, is that practical? Is that realistic? If I start out with a $5,000 account, am I going to be a multimillionaire? And the answer is, hell no. <laughs> yes, there are outliers where you've had people that have taken some small accounts and, uh, you know, just happen to get in at the beginning of the internet bubble. I'll give you an example of a, one of the fellows that very famous you can google him if you like um, Dan Zanger and uh, Dan Zanger started out as a pool say a uh, pool cleaner I think or something like that he started out with twelve thousand dollars and turned it into a million dollars and, and let, let me give you a, a slight analogy to this I, re I remember this very very vividly at the time because it was 19 the year was 1998 and I was living in Las Vegas and um, a I got into a taxi cab because in Vegas you, you don't really need a car you can take a taxi everywhere and I lived right off the strip and I got into a taxi cab and met up with this really cool dude and a young guy and you know he had a laptop computer at the time which was absolutely insane and he was actually he would actually told me that he'd become a millionaire from trading now if you if anybody remembers 1998 for the four or five years before that, the tech bubble was going crazy. It was the internet bubble. And um, he had been driving a taxi cab, and he'd made a million dollars. It was 1998. Well, I actually liked the guy, and we got into conversations. I was like, oh, that's congratulations. Good for you. And, you know, I'm really happy. And I, I kept him around for a little while as my driver because I said in Vegas, you don't you, you don't need a car. I, I was living off the strip, and I was just basically um, back then. I was doing some card counting, and um, I was uh, you know I, I didn't need to drive, so I had him all the time. I liked him. He would come and get me. I'd call for him, and we'd specifically got to become friends. So he was my main driver. He was like a, a pre Uber Uber. So <laughs> so in any event. Um, uh, I stayed there until 1999, actually till 2000. And as our friendship grew over those two years, by the time I left, he was dead broke. 
That's right. He was dead broke. It took him five years to amass uh, a million dollars, and in three to six months, he had lost it all, right? And I see that a lot, right? Right now, for the last eight years, we've been in a cyclical bull that has been stirred on by quantitative easing, and that's about to change. And I expect there's a lot of young people out there, just like that taxi driver that took advantage of certain market conditions, and they're going to be broke too. So whenever you see anybody that's advertising to you on the internet, I made a million dollars from $5,000, it doesn't mean shit, okay? Because you got to hold on to that money when market conditions change, and many people don't. And why does that happen? Because in order to make a million dollars from five thousand dollars you have to be taking astronomical risk all right and that astronomical risk is ultimately a double-edged sword it's going to cut really good when the market conditions are going to be good for that and it's going to cut against you when the market conditions change okay so how much money can you make yes you can make a million dollars with a five thousand dollar account However, that is not sustainable. What is sustainable, if you can become very, very good and dedicated to trading, is I would like to believe, and most of my analytics from both my personal performance and my client's performance, is that over a large sample size, you can, if you're very, very good, it is possible, and I want to quantify this with a with a small account, you can make 8 to 10% a month over a large sample size. Okay? Are there going to be months when you lose? Yes. Are there going to be months when you make 30 40%? Yes. Those are going to happen. So can you make a living from trading? Yes. How much money can you make? Well, realistically, realistically, with years of experience and a small account, I want to quantify that, not... I'm talking about managing millions of dollars. I'm talking about accounts less than $100,000. Over a large sample size, I'm talking 12, 15 years, multiple market cycles and, and, and conditions, it is possible if you put the time in and you learn from the right people to have some form of consistency around the 8 to 10%. Okay, next question. Question number two. How much time do I have to commit to learn to trade and how much time is required every day? Okay, now this is another one of my pet peeves with all these bozos that are out there that are telling you, you know, go and live on the beach and, you know, I made, you know, a million dollars or 200,000 or 300,000 or 500,000 dollars working an hour or two a day. <sighs> I don't even know where to start with this one other than it is nothing but a crock of nonsense. Again, you're talking about people that have learned some little trick. And again, this, th these are people that have learned li some little trick that is working in a specific market environment. Okay, Market environments change all the time. The one thing that's constant with the market is change. Um, the irony is, is that over the last eight years, due to quantitative easing, we haven't had that much change, but it is changing now. It's taken This cycle has taken eight to nine years. It's a little bit longer than a normal cycle, but it is changing. Okay, How much time is required? A lot. All right. Uh, you've all heard the 10,000 hour rule. Well, that applies to trading as well, too. You've got to put, if you want to make 8 to 10% a month over a large sample size, um, you've got to put in the time. And listen, there was, listen, guys, there was years that I made no money, years for years at a time, but I still plugged away 14 hours a day, 8 hours a day, you know, minimum 6 hours a day where I was learning, honing my craft, learning the things that needed to be learned, going through all the different material that I needed to learn in order to uh, uh, be successful. If anybody tells you anything different, 
they are just a flash in a pan, a one-trick wonder that have been. They're just people that have been lucky over the last little over the last little period of time. These people think you know they've been they've been trading for like three, four, or five years. They think that's a lot of time, and the reality is that's that's nothing. That is when it comes to trading, that is not even close to a reliable sample size as to can you have a career out of this okay so again let's get that you better be prepared to put the time in to learn this craft it's going to take six hours a day you know for um, a minimum you got to put 10,000 hours in right period how you do that is up to you question three do I need to be smart or good at math and economics to be a trader? Um, the answer to that is yes and no. Okay. Um, smart. Listen, when I was a floor trader, I worked with some pretty stupid people. <laughs> I mean, you know, nothing against floor traders, but they weren't road scholars. And, you know, they weren't usually even college or university educated. A lot of them were just really street smart. So a, a really good trader, a very good trader, has a combination of two things. See, they have the combination of street smarts. Because remember, at the end of the day, you're trading against somebody. Trading ultimately is a zero-sum game. In order for me to win, somebody else has to lose. Now, not totally true, but for the most part, that's true, okay? So you are trading against people, all right, or companies or other people's opinions. In other words, somebody thinks that stock, stock is going higher, you think that stock is going lower, and that's the bet. If, they, if that person thought that stock was going uh, higher, there'd be, there'd be nobody that would be shorting anything, right? So... The point that I'm trying to make is that you have to have a certain street smart, uh, smarts or a killer instinct. The greatest traders in this world, they have a killer instinct. They, they understand that this is a competition of intelligence. So you don't necessarily need to be book smart to be a very good trader, right? But you do have to be street smart. Do you need to be good at math and economics? Well. Um, the answer is yes and no. Um, you have to be good at math in terms of understanding risk, right? Um, if you kind of don't really understand the math, the risk, the math of the risk, then you're going to fail, right? So you do have to be kind of good at math, meaning that you have to be able to quantify your risk and be able to um, calculate your risk in a way that is repeatable, right? And as far as being good at economics goes, again, that's something that you don't have to do, but because you don't have to be an economist, but you do have to understand the influence of things like earnings reports, uh, the things, uh, things like takeovers, buyouts, good news, bad news, data. Um, you know, you, you've got to really understand what each data point means uh, and really that's something that you can learn uh, it's not that difficult to learn how to uh, how the data affects markets at different times okay so do you need to be smart you got to be street smart um, do you need to be good at math it will help you definitely and do you need to be good at economics it will help you definitely okay but do you need them not necessarily. Question four. Is it better to trade stocks, options, or forex? This is one of my most frequently, frequently asked questions. And um, the answer I like to I like to put it this way. The the quick answer is it's much better to trade stocks. And the reason why it's better to trade stocks initially, initially, is I like to use the analogy of going, going and looking for a wife. 
let's assume you were we wanted to find the perfect wife and you know I gave you two choices you could go down to uh, the bar on the north side of the street and that bar has about 30 or 40 women in it right and they're all interested in you and you you can choose from any one of those 30 or 40 women right or you could go to the bar on the south side of the street and that bar has 3,000 women in it and they're all interested in you and you can choose from 3,000 remember as a trader how do we make our living right how how exactly do I make my living well I make my living by inefficiencies in the market right what that what is that a lot of people say that's your edge what's your edge well as a trader I'm looking for market inefficiencies in other words I'm looking for a situation where the market or quote unquote my competition has it wrong you got that that's what I do for a living I'm looking for situations where my competition has it wrong and I know the true answer and my competition will eventually catch up to the truth right so again if I have a choice of uh, 30 forex pairs that's the bar with the 30 women or I have a choice of 3,000 stocks where I can find inefficiencies where am I most likely to find the most amount of inefficiencies in the forex market or the stock market obviously the stock market is going to give me the most amount of inefficiencies do inefficiencies exist in the forex market yes they're just far and few between okay so stocks are clearly the um, the better asset to learn to trade on can you make money in forex markets yes you can but there's just less inefficiencies okay um, what about options well options are also very very good but you still have to get the inefficiency right you can find a lot of inefficiencies in the options market as far as mispricings right uh, they do exist um, and so options are good too um, so it put them in order I would say definitely stocks first options second but in order to trade options you better damn well be good at math so if you're not good at math stay away from options because they're very math based uh, and then of course Forex is third and in the Forex market you better be good at economics okay finally the fifth question probably the biggest argument out there oh, what's better technical analysis or fundamental analysis now again this is a loaded question um, this question is one that um, uh, is argued really for the last 25 years and usually the argument comes from big institutions who use nothing but fundamental analysis and retail traders who use nothing but technical analysis right and so the argument is this well I don't need to learn fundamental analysis because I'm not trading with a one month two month three month time frame one year two year three year time frame so fundamental analysis is extremely effective when you're talking larger time frames if your holding period is for three months to a year fundamental analysis is going to work far 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 better than any technical analysis ever could however if your holding period is for 10 minutes fundamental analysis is only going to have a very limited ap applicable approach okay but that doesn't mean that over a short term period fundamental analysis cannot help you as well too so for example a company comes out and reports earnings well guess what those earnings are terrible and I want to day trade that it can definitely assist me in a very short term trade okay however for the most part fundamental analysis is the backdrop 
So should you learn fundamental analysis if you're a short-term time frame uh, trader? The answer is yes, because it will give you a backdrop. So, for example, if I have a very, uh, this month is a very good uh, example. Let me just pull up a chart because uh, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. All right, so um, this particular month, I'm along biased. Fundamentally, all the data is suggesting that this will be a stronger month um, on the overall market. So this is the S&P 500. And, you know, I, uh, after I came to all my analysis, um, after I crunched all the numbers, this is when I decided, and I put this big green line across the S&P 500, okay? And so from that moment forward, I was long. And the fundamentals were suggesting that the market was going to be stronger this month. Right, so here's an example of where I have a fundamental backdrop, okay, but I am now going to use my skills in technical analysis to apply it to a, to that backdrop. Does that make sense? Because I am a shorter time frame trader, I'm now going to use my personal skills of order flow, which something that I do proprietary to me and use my order flow or technical analysis to see if it confirms or 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 doesn't confirm my overall backdrop right so as you can see here if we kind of go back in time and I have my bias my backdrop from this period forward I can now say okay the first thing that I want to do is I want to see, this is a 30 minute chart by the way, okay? I want to see if my, my order flow at this particular point in time based on what I was looking at uh, was suggesting that the market was not strong at all. But my fundamental backdrop was that the market was going to be very strong, okay? So with that in mind, I'm getting a conflict of information, aren't I? So the fundamental analysis is suggesting a strong market. However, the conflict or the reality, the objective reality is saying it's a weak market. So a smart, intelligent move would be, I do not have confirmation on my fundamental analysis, don't take any trade, right? So the market continues, it goes lower, and we start getting down to levels that now start to represent good value to me, okay? Because now I want to be long this market, but the reality is telling me that I'm not right. And so now when the market drops lower, I start to get excited because this represents good value to me, right? Now, ultimately the market does get stronger and we'll see if it continues strong. Finally, we get positive on the month. Okay. And now we're getting higher. Now, now we have an interesting situation because we, I know that technically, at least as far as order flow is concerned, this is actually an extended price point. Okay? So... You know, this is something where if I did find a trade, I'm not going to teach you how to trade right now, but if I did find a trade at this level, I would probably take profits because my backdrop is still that the market is not a strong market technically in a strong fundamental. So I, the, mar the market is higher, which is what I was expecting it to do, but this is a level where I would probably be taking profits, right? Now, as the market comes back down, I start getting back down to levels where it, which represent value to me, and I start looking for trades again, okay? And that's where it brings us to this day, okay? So the answer to the question is, which is better, fundamentals or technicals? Um, is really both in, co in the context of what you're using it for, 
Another, give you, I'm just going to give you one more quick example on a quick backdrop. Okay, so let's say you take a stock like Amazon, right? Okay, now here's a situation where the company came out with earnings, right? Okay, or let's use Facebook. Here we go. There's a better example. All right, so Facebook... Going into the earnings, I was very, I was bullish. Okay, now if you don't believe me, I want you to go and read my stock, my Twitter account. If I go there quickly, I'm just going to show you very quickly. Okay, so here's an extremely good example of how this works. So just before, on April 25th at 4 p.m., I quoted Facebook. It's party time. I think we beat and blow away earnings. Okay, got that? I put that there before it happened. But I will sell into the rally tomorrow or the following day. So here's a very good example of how to combine fundamental and technical analysis. I own calls, okay? So I bought calls just before the earnings based on the fact that they were gonna blow away. Not a lot, just a small size, right? Then I said I will short 165 hard if we hit it, and that was at 401, okay? Now, let's go and take a look at that, okay? So, here we were before the earnings, okay? And I actually picked up calls. My students will understand why I bought calls at 156, okay? Um, the day before the earnings, okay? Uh, or that day, that morning, good liquidity and value, okay? And I waited, I knew Facebook was going to blow away earnings on the fundamental analysis. Now, I said, if we hit 165, I'm going to short it. Okay? Now, watch what happened. We blew through, can't see it, but you, we blew through 165. Now, obviously, this was after hours, and I had calls. I couldn't do anything about that trade because I have calls, right? So, I was more than happy than the pig in the mud to sell my calls the next morning at 163 and start to look for shorts because overall I believe that this market is my student will understand why this this level looks like a good level to me because technically fundamentally the stock is strong but the objective reality is that technically the stock is weak okay the market went a little bit higher. I wish I would have held on for a little bit longer, but I still am building a short position right now. Okay, I'm not dead, dead short, but I'm building a short position in Facebook because the objective technical reality is telling me different than what the fundamentals are telling me. So the answer, I'm sorry, it's a long question, but it deserves a long answer. The, what is better, technical analysis or fundamental analysis? If you're just using one, you're an idiot. Okay? I don't care who you are, whether you're a multi-billion dollar fund or whether you're some guy that's trading a pattern and think patterns are everything. If you're just using one, I'm sorry, you're not going to last very long. You've got to learn both of them. Okay? Don't believe anybody that just tells you all you need to learn is this pattern or this thing and you're going to be a multi-millionaire. So this video is 30 minutes long. It's gone on a lot longer than I really wanted it to, but I think it answers the five most important questions, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, can you make a living from trading? Yes, you can. How much money can you make? Billions. Are you likely to do that? No. But you can have a very good career of 8 to 10% if you put in... 10,000 hours to learn this craft and commit to it every day. And do I need to be good at math and economics? No, but that helps. Stocks are clearly the best way to start to learn to trade and then go to the Forex market. Ironically, most people like to start off with the Forex market because it's high leverage. Okay, Options are best, second best. Technical fundamental analysis, both. Okay? Five top most frequently asked questions answered from 38 years of trading experience. Okay, there's an old saying in life, folks. 
Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you listen to. Do you want to listen to some guy that's been trading for five years and thinks they know it all? Okay. Or do you want somebody that's got a very large sample size? In trading, sample size is extremely important. You've got to be able to see multiple market conditions to understand if you're going to have a career from this. These are all things to consider as you consider your career as a trader. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now.